Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved a bill to make our nation's capital the 51st state. KCAU 9 Washington correspondent Basil John reports on how lawmakers on both sides are reacting in our top story at 5. 200 years of political repression in the District of Columbia. New York Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney and other House Democrats say it's time to make Washington, D.C. the 51st state. All people have a right to full and equal representation in their government. D.C. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton introduced this bill and says district residents deserve full representation in Congress. But D.C. residents are taxed without representation and cannot consent to the laws under which they as American citizens must live. While Democrats say this is about fairness, Republicans say this isn't about the people. It's about the politics. This is about a Democrat power grab. Pennsylvania Congressman Fred Keller and Kentucky Congressman James Comer say Democrats are forcing this issue through for one reason. H.R. 51 is not really about voting representation. It's about Democrats consolidating their power in Washington. As a state, D.C. would likely add two new Democrats to the Senate. And Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan says this will just help Democrats push their agenda. Pure power grab to give two Democrat senators to District of Columbia. The bill now heads to the Senate, where it will need to clear a 60-vote threshold to pass. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. Iowa's 4th District Representative Randy Feenstra says he is opposed to the bill, calling it a Democratic power grab. So what the Democrats, what they wanted to do was, uh, you know, consolidate power. And just like we saw with them uh, taking the Supreme Court, wanting to take them from 9 to 13, uh, they wanted to also uh, take the District of Columbia so they could have two more senators. Again, it's a power grab. And, and that's not right. Feenstra instead supports returning presidential land to Maryland. That way, voting rights would be achieved without changing any congressional politics. South Dakota school districts are seeing a troubling trend tonight. They say they're having a hard time finding superintendents who want the job. Officials tell KCAU the job is seeing its highest turnover rate since the 2008 financial crisis. Tom Oster with the Dakota Educational Consultants says he believes the reason for all these openings may partially have to do with the difficulties imposed by the ongoing pandemic and the fact that superintendents have to deal with a wide range of beliefs that parents have when it comes to their students and COVID-19 in the classroom. Coming up tonight at 10, KCAU 9's Mallory Smith introduces us to a parent in the area and a superintendent who's been dealing with the pandemic and running a district. Governor Kristi Noem is against requiring high school athletes to be required to be vaccinated for COVID-19. Today, she penned a letter to the South Dakota Athletic Commission asking them to rescind their current rule that athletes provide proof of immunization. Noam says her request is under authority of her latest executive order that banned government-issued vaccine passports. The president of Morningside College here in Siouxland is getting a tree planted in honor of his legacy and also in celebration of Earth Day, which is today. Students and staff gathered outside Lewis Hall to honor President John Reinders with a plaque near the autumn maple blaze tree to thank him and his wife for their dedication to the school. Last year, unfortunately, because of COVID, we didn't get the chance to celebrate Earth Day and we had a few events planned. So this year, to make up for that, we wanted to have a little bit bigger of a celebration. So with the retirement of President Reinders, we thought that it would be good to plant a tree for Earth Day, but also recognize him as well as he'll be entering into his last year next year. That was student body president Garrett Arbuckle, and he says he hopes students associate that tree with peace and also with the Rinders family. On the other side of campus, Morningside students are making the most of Earth Day with paintbrushes. Art programs at local schools are partnering up with the City of Sioux City's Environmental Advisory Board. They were trying to raise awareness against dumping unsafe materials down storm drains that, of course, run into the Missouri River. Once completed, the artwork on the storm drain will read, Only Rain Down the Drain. And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. What a fitting uh, slogan to put on there today. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, uh, you've already told us rain potentially in the forecast. That's right. Rain moving into the area right now, actually, and we're going to continue to see a chance of rain overnight tonight. Today, though, temperature is much more pleasant here throughout Siouxland compared to where we've been most of the week. 
Getting up to 58 degrees today here in Sioux City, 60 in Wayne, 57 in Norfolk today. Cherokee reaching up to 60 in Lamar's, 61 for your high temperature today. So we've had some nice warmth throughout the area overnight tonight. Temperatures, again, they're going to stay warmer compared to where we have been here over the last few nights. 40 degrees for your low temperature tonight here in Sioux City, Lamar's in Cherokee, 39 in Norfolk and Storm Lake tonight in Yankton with a low temperature right there around 38 degrees. So it is going to be a cool night, but not a freezing cold night here throughout Siouxland. It looks like we'll continue to see warmer temperatures here in the coming days. Details on that coming up in the 9 on 9. Sophie. All right, thanks, Marcus. Construction workers hit a gas line while digging in the Morningside area. Happened around 840 this morning in the 1200 block of Morningside Avenue. Mid-American Energy crews tell us that four customers in total were affected. Sioux City Fire Rescue alerted residents to shelter in place while they worked to shut off that gas. Everybody's good. Uh, we're sheltering the neighbors in place. Not real windy today, so most of the gas is just dissipating going straight up. The leak was fully repaired around noontime. Fire officials say there were no injuries reported. It's modeled after the oldest schoolhouse in the area, and it's run entirely by volunteers. We're talking about the Smithland Log Cabin in Woodbury County's oldest town. And you'll meet the woman who's been taking care of it now for more than two decades in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. The town of Smithland simply wanted to give its youth a job, so they put out a call to build a cabin. From then on, it just kept growing, and I, I can't tell you when it actually became a museum. I can't really tell you why all this stuff is in here. 1938, this all started, and in 1949, it was dedicated. From then on, it was a replica of the first school, and then it sat kind of idle, empty. I don't know when they started packing stuff in here, but it was at the door. We had so much stuff coming in, and it was, a lot of it was in boxes. And it was around the north wall was, and the west wall was just boxes up to your waist. So something had to be done. With the help of friends and family, the museum was given an extension, but not without some obstacles. And we had to take out trees and a brick wall and snakes and whatever was there. This labor of love began for Catherine back in 1995. In fact, without people helping the museum out of the goodness of their hearts, the operation would not be possible. This cabin has been nurtured by many, many volunteers. I had help from the word go. And while manpower is volunteer-based, having money for upkeep is largely thanks to grant funding. And then the telephone, which was Western Iowa Telephone then, gave us several grants. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be here. And Catherine believes all Siouxlanders have something to gain by visiting. I had a I had a gentleman come, and he opened up this door, and he looked in, and he said, "Wow, this is a treasure." Our high school graduation pictures are back there. That is one highlight. We have artifacts out of the Indian Hill, what we call it Indian Hill. And I love the quilt that was brought from the church. I just like everything. I like everything in here. <laughs> it has been just a happy, happy place for me and a, and a place of value. I learned along with a lot of the others. Now, if you would like to visit the Smithland Log Cabin, it is best to call ahead, Catherine tells us, so that she or another volunteer can let you in for a tour. That number is 712-889-2370, or you can find it in this story on our website, of course, SiouxlandProud.com. Well, how does a new motorcycle sound? KCAU is a proud sponsor of the Pete Godey Memorial Motorcycle Raffle. Tickets are $100 each, and for a chance to win an Indian motorcycle, proceeds go toward the Iowa chapter of the ALS Association. Now, the drawing is this Sunday, so just a few days left to purchase tickets, or you can learn more about the raffle by visiting our website. Again, that is SiouxlandProud.com. 
Well, lost and found, the memories stored on a sunken camera are being recovered. The search to find the original photographer coming up. And it's looking like some light rain out there tonight. A pleasant weekend for us. 70s and 80s possible next week. I'll have details after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Welcome back, and thanks for sticking with us. Uh, not a bad day to be outside, mm -hmm. running some errands. You know, you felt good in the sun. Sometimes the wind hits you. Yeah, a little, a little bit. A little bit of wind <laughs> out there. Wind gusts today up to around 30, so a little breezy. But the good news, we had sunshine this morning, and temperatures much warmer compared to the 40s we've had most of the week. We had temperatures today in the mid to upper 50s. The view outside right now from the KCA United Studio brought to you by the Port Neal Welding Company showing those gray skies though. Clouds really moving into the area here over the last couple of hours and they'll continue to move in here overnight tonight along with that some rain. Temperatures outside right now they're in the mid to upper 50s throughout much of Siouxland. 57 degrees here in Sioux City. Lamar's Orange City as well as Storm Lake at 57. 58 in Cherokee right now. 55 in Wayne. Norfolk a little cooler at 50. That's because the rain's already moving through there as well as uh, some more cloud cover. Wind speed still a bit breezy now out of the south southwestern direction at around 15 to 20 miles per hour for most of us. 18 mile per hour winds in Sioux City, 17 in Wayne and Norfolk, 16 mile per hour winds there in Yankton, 15 currently in Lamar's and 16 in Storm Lake. So again, a bit breezy out there today. Gusts at times up to around 25 to 30 miles per hour. Right now, wind gusts out of the south in Sioux City at 25. 20 mile per hour gust in Cherokee, 28. Morning sky, a beautiful morning sky, I should say. This was sent in from Kimberly in Spirit Lake. So thank you for that picture. If you have any photos to send our way, Siouxlandproud.com is the place to go. Click on the weather tab and send some pictures for us. Absolutely radiant shot she yeah, got there. It's impressive, those early morning colors that I don't normally see. I stay sleeping when the sun comes up. Same. We work the night shift. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, to plant or not to plant? It's the question many cotton farmers are asking themselves right now. Their motivation and concerns for you coming up. But first, at the bottom of a river, sat a camera with more than 2,000 pictures. Remarkably, they've all been recovered. Find out how long it sat there before being found. Next. KCAU 9 News has been recognized by the Iowa Broadcast News Association for Excellence in Public Affairs for its 2020 series of coronavirus town hall meetings. Trust the team that more Siouxlanders are turning to for distinguished comprehensive news coverage. Trust KCAU 9. During a manatee swimming tour, a lost camera was found. Despite being heavily corroded, that SD card is still intact somehow. Megan Gannon shares the search for the camera's owner. The tour captain tells me that it's common for him to find items when he's on a tour like a digital camera, but he's never found one that had that many photos on it. The camera was found just yesterday while Captain Dustin Molina was taking a group on a manatee tour. He says a manatee is what helped him see it. I went and checked it out, watching it eating on the bottom, and then sure enough, it just leads me right to this camera sitting there on the bottom. They were finally able to retrieve the SD card from the camera. There, I had to pry the door open because it was just so corroded. Um, I mean, all the metals corroded and whatnot, so yeah, it's amazing that it still worked. To find there were more than 2,000 pictures on it. I think the first few photos were from like uh, 2012, 2011, and uh, I think the, the most recent ones were 2014. Um, so this camera's been in there, you know, seven years or so. Now the Plantation Adventure Center is sharing some of these photos on social media. That's Hunter Springs. There we go. Hoping they can find the family and give them back their photos of priceless memories. It'll make me happy for sure if, if we could find the find the owners. Well, something like this with all these pictures of memories, I, I'm sure that's really, you know, uh, really close to them. They really want this. Those here at the Plantation Adventure Center say that they have been getting tons of messages trying to help identify the family in the photos, and they're hoping to have definite answers soon. Well, in Texas, cotton farmers are rolling the dice tonight. High prices leading some to plant, but low rainfall keeping others on pause. A deeper look at the issue next. Cotton planting season is quickly approaching, and farmers in Texas are hoping for a good amount of rain. Olivia Whitehead reports on why the price of cotton is encouraging. From my perspective, there's a lot of things that are showing, telling us to wait. Don't get in a hurry. Uh, we're not, we don't have the conditions to go out there and start planting from a temperature, from a moisture standpoint. It's an issue many farmers like Jeremy Brown are facing when deciding the best time to plant. We're, we're coming off of a certainly less than stellar year. When you look at the drought maps, you know, we hear 
uh, comparisons to being as bad and maybe in some cases worse than 2011. Affecting not only the farmers, but the cotton industry's infrastructure. That's our cotton gins, that's our uh, warehouses, cotton warehouses, the oil mills, everybody that touches that bale of cotton after it's produced. Thankfully, farmers have a backup plan known as crop insurance. That is there basically as a tool when things are this bad. You know, it's there to help us when, when the weather and conditions are not favorable to grow a crop. But with cotton prices up, there's even more of a push to get seed in the ground.